For exercise two, you need to get a worksheet, worksheet from your teacher. Um, it looks like this and yours will be double-sided. I've printed mine single-sided so we can, it doesn't bleed through the paper. All right, so let's work through this. It says your friend uses the equation C equals 50P to find the total cost C for the number of people P entering a local amusement park. So to find our total cost, we're going to take 50 times however many people decide to go to the park. So A says to create a table and record the cost of entering the amusement park for several different sized groups of people. So you can pick any numbers you want. Um, I'm just going to use my standard 0, 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to do number of people. And then I'm going to find the cost. So 0, 1, 2, 3. You could do 0, 10, 20, 30. You could go 5, 10, 15. However you want to do it is fine. So if 0 people go, that would cost us $0. If one person goes, this would fill this in with 1. So 1 times 50 would be 50. If I substitute in a 2, 2 times 50 is 100. And then a 3, 3 times 50 is 150. Is the cost of admission proportional to the amount of people entering the amusement park? Explain why or why not. So if I go up to my table and I divide out, 1 it goes through 0, 0. And if I take my y divided by my x, I get that constant of 50. So yes, the k value is 50. So every person pays the same amount. Okay, C, what is the unit rate and what does it represent in the context of the situation? So our unit rate is 50, which we found in the problem above. And this means that it is $50 per, um, you could say admission, or you could say, or per person. All right, when we flip this over, it says to sketch a graph to represent the relationship. All right, let me grab, let's try this orange. All right, so the first thing I want to do is label my graph. So um, we're talking about cost of admission. And then on my X, if I look at my table, that's number of people. And then along here is my cost, and I'm going to show that it's in dollars. All right, so my people are 0, 1, 2, and 3. So I'm just going to count by ones. Um, I'm going to use these solid lines here. Now you'll have to adjust your intervals based on what numbers you chose. So if you chose 5, 10, 15, you could count by fives. If you chose like 10, 20, 30, you could count by tens two, three, <clears throat> and then I'm going to count by, um, let's see, I'm going to count by 25s, so 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, and 150. All right, so my first point is zero, zero. My next point was 150, so over 1 and up uh, 50, and then it was 2, 100, and then it was 3, 150. So I'm going to try to connect those freehand. Oh, not too bad. Okay. 
Next question, what points must be on the graph of the line if the two quantities represented are proportional to each other? Explain why and describe these points in the context of the problem. So if we're looking at a graph, we've already said that one of those points has to be the zero, zero point, and that's showing us that it is proportional. So zero, zero, and this would be zero people enter. and our cost is zero dollars. And then the other point that we've talked about is that one comma r, where our r is our unit rate. So for this problem, that would be one comma 50. And this would mean, um, let's write it the other way. So $50 per person, or you could say per admission. Okay, and our last question, would the point 5, 250 be on the graph? What does this point represent in the context of the situation? So <clears throat> if we use our equation, um, C equals 50P, so this is our number of people and this is our cost. If I put in a 5 here, so my cost is equal to 50 times 5, 50 times 5 is... 250. So yes, um, we'll say 5, 250 would be on the graph. It means for five people, it would cost two hundred and fifty dollars.